Hey guys, welcome back to Lowbrow Customs Saturday Sportster. We're gonna go ahead and uh, get some more parts removed from the motorcycle in preparation to get some powder coating done. As I discussed in a previous episode, we are going to be powder coating front and rear rims. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and powder coat the lower legs, the triple trees, the headlight mount. We're gonna do all these parts black because black is cool. Can't go wrong with black. Try to save some money on the project by not changing two different wheels and changing the appearance of the motorcycle. We're gonna be disassembling the forks to get just the lower legs off. And then once we get them back from the powder coater, we can do our different damper tubes to make our front end longer. Uh, we've also gonna put some longer shocks on the back because we're trying to jack her up. Tracker, think tracker. Saturday Sportster. Woo! Let's get going here. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and remove the caliper. We'll leave the hose connected to it, and then we'll take the master cylinder off. We can lay that on the workbench, and then we can uh, move on to the handlebars, risers, headlight, and get some of that stuff taken off in preparation for removing the forks. I've went ahead and uh, laid some tools out here today, so we're not running back to the toolbox every 10 seconds. And I'll talk about what tools I'm using as I go along. First thing we're gonna use is we're gonna use a 10 millimeter on the caliper bolts. Why are they 10 millimeter? because this is a Japanese front end. I know, it's a Harley Davidson. And I've got my long ratchet because they are uh, torqued. So once they're loose, they should come right out, no problem. And incidentally, this is a 12 point. You have to have a 12 point for this because you can see the fasteners have are set up for a 12 point. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and leave the caliper on the disc until I get the other things removed so we're not hanging it by the hose. We got a long one and a short one. And then we have a socket head fastener holding the hose up underneath. And if you've watched very many of my videos, you'll probably see how I just love to use this tool my quarter drive with a spot to put your ratchet. Woo! Okay, now the rat, it was starting to run into the tire, so we'll go ahead and finish it off like this. And we do want to try to keep good track of our fasteners, even though I know where they go but we'll kind of group our fasteners together. And the next thing I'm going to be using is going to be a T27 to take, you know, it might help if I put my glass on. I might actually be able to see what I'm doing here today. T27 to take the master cylinder off. You got to support that half with your, or it'll fall off the bike. And we don't want caliper, I'm sorry, master cylinders falling off the bike. Take your half off, take the other half off. There's also a 5 16 hex that was previously removed right here. Uh, I'll show you on the clamp here. Now you can see that the caliper is coming off. And there you have it, all in one lump sum. No need to disconnect the hose. And then you can see there's another clamp similar to this one, different size hole in it, and that goes on the triple tree over there that was already removed. So we'll go ahead and set this on the workbench and keep going forward. And you may also notice how I've got the bike on the lift backwards. It's going to make it a lot easier to get this front end off. If you don't have a lift, uh, what you can do to take your front end off is you can uh, put it on the side stand and using a common floor jack, you can put the floor jack on this side of the frame, on the bottom of the frame rail, and jack it up till the wheel comes off the ground, just enough to take the things apart 
and then you could always block it up with wood after you've got your wheel off. So if you don't have a lift, you can still get these jobs done fairly easily in the garage. The first thing we're gonna do before we take the top clamp and the speedo off is we're gonna loosen the riser bolts because if you take the bars off and then you try to loosen those large uh, half inch bolts, this part might wanna spin on you. So you wanna loosen those first, three quarter inch. Kind of tricky getting in there. Well, that one wasn't very tight at all. That's not good. We're also gonna be using some Lowbrow Customs solid riser bushings, the black version. So we'll go ahead and get the other one started. That's funny, usually those are way tighter than that. It may be that the rubber bushings have started to wear out, even though this is a low mileage, but you know, rubber does deteriorate. Now that we know that those are gonna come out okay, we can go ahead and remove these four. We'll set this to the side, we'll get our bars off of there. We'll take the Speedo off first. Move it off to the side, then we'll steady the bars. Actually, I think a uh, T-handle might come in handy here. A little bit faster than ratcheting those off. And we are going to be reusing the speedometer. Uh, Kind of nice to know how fast you're going. And since it is a single gauge, it's not obtrusive. It was it was dual gauge, I might want to switch to a get rid of the tachometer. Okay, we're just gonna kind of angle that over there like a so. Then we can go ahead and take the last two for the bar clamp, top clamp. And when you get to the last one, you want to steady the bars or they will fall off. There you go. So again, two different lengths on those. The longer one is for the Speedo bracket. Okay, we can go ahead and take these off now. And I think in order to save money, we're not gonna send these to the powder coater. They're already black. We'll go ahead and uh, I have uh, some rattle can paint that I like to use. I get this at the AutoZone, semi-gloss black. Great for small parts like this, durable. Gives a nice finish. So we can uh, go ahead and we'll, we'll be painting some parts on there. I'll probably, probably repaint the caliper with that same paint. It's looking kind of dingy. Just kind of get her all cleaned up and looking good for not spending a lot of money. Okay, we can go ahead and remove this next, same size. Same size. I just recalled I want to do this black, so what I'm going to do before I take these off is there's a there's a nut underneath this little chrome cover, and that's how you aim your headlight, and we'll be removing this completely from the light. So we'll go ahead and do that now versus, versus uh, you just pop that little cover off, and underneath you're going to see that big nut. It'll be easier to remove this now while this is still attached rather than trying to work with it off of the bike. Three quarter. And once she's loose, it should come right off. Support your headlight, even though it has wires. And there you go, headlight. There's also a couple of, there's an odd, 
faster. Oh, we'll see that when we get that off of there. I'm sorry, an odd kind of concave washer. I suppose if you're really trying to save more money, you could always uh, rattle can this part too versus powder coating it, your choice. Oh, look out, parts everywhere. Here's the washer that I was speaking of, and that goes in this way so that it allows you to angle your light to aim it at the road. So when we go back together, we'll do that kind of stuff. There's also, a, there's also a decal on here that will need to be removed. And there's some spider nests too. Huh. Hopefully they're all uh, hatched and gone away. Okay. Oh darn, the silly frickin' uh, switch wires go into the headlights, so we'll have to pop that apart to, uh, well, it looks like we can, oh, there's the ground wire here. We'll just lay this stuff down here for now. There's our ground wire, it was on this side. I knew there was a ground wire on there. That's basically grounding some stuff there. All right, so we've gotta get this ground wire off of here. Five sixteenths. And notice she's got a star washer on there. So we'll keep all those parts together with each other. And we'll go ahead and take the other one off here and we'll put it with the other one. That's for the brake line right there. Okay, that's our speed sensor. I think what we can do since to get this stuff out of the way here is we'll go ahead and we'll unplug this and then we'll cut the zip tie for this speed sensor. <laughs> Hard job there. And then we can go ahead and remove this from the motorcycle. There we go. And then we can get this cleaned up and make a decision on repainting that. Okay, that gave us a little bit more. This is all part of the main harness, so we're not gonna be taking this off. We're just gonna hang it once we get the front end off. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get the wheel off. I've got a flat jack underneath the frame. I've got the rear wheel. I've got the frame tied down there. Uh, guess we can go back up for this job, be a little easier. You wanna loosen this uh, nut first with a three quarter inch wrench or socket. And the reason you loosen this first is because if you loosen the pinch bolt on the other side first, the axle will spin around. You could st stuff a screwdriver in the hole over here. It's just easier to just loosen this first. And you can go ahead and take it completely off in preparation for removing the axle. Then you're gonna have a lock washer and a flat washer that won't come out until we start moving the axle. Okay, on this side you've got the socket head and this is, uh, oh, what the heck size is this? 5 16 9 16 wrench. You're gonna loosen this pinch bolt Oh, goodness gracious, who tightened that, Hercules? Oh, there she goes. Oh boy. And since we are just removing everything, we'll go ahead and just take it completely off. Normally you wouldn't need to if you were just taking the wheel off and putting it back on, you could leave this in there. So basically what this does is if when you it squeezes this together and keeps this from turning. Uh, she's a little rusty. I think you may remember me saying 
This poor old motorcycle was parked in the shed and neglected. And now we're gonna get her fixed up and have some fun. Give her a little tap tap. If you're having a hard time getting her out, you can put a screwdriver in there. So you're just gonna go ahead and axle out. Wheel comes right off. Look at that. Nice, we'll go ahead and set this aside for now. Okay, there's two ways you can go about the front end. I'm gonna do it the way I used to do it when I worked at the shop. If I was just doing a chrome lower legs, I would basically remove the lower bolt that's in the damper tube out, and then I could pump it to get the fork oil out. And then I would pull the leg off and put the new one on, but we are taking it completely apart. Uh, but I, I think this is an easier way to do it. You could also remove the entire fork off of the bike, but then you're dealing with working on a bench or a table or something of that nature. So we'll go ahead and show you how to do it this way. You need to have a oil pan ready because we are going to be, the fork oil is gonna come out the bottom here. If you were to use those little tiny holes, Nah, it just doesn't get it out quick enough for my liking. And in preparation for removing the lower legs, we're gonna go ahead and knock these up off of there. And you'll see on the leg, there's a little spot for you to use a punch. So we'll turn, oh boy, that one's kinda scruddy looking. Well, I don't seem to have a small punch here. I must have taken it home, so we'll use this one. And she's a little corroded. Uh, and that's not working it too good, so we'll go ahead and continue like it is. And there she goes. Oh my goodness gracious. Would you look at that? I don't think that would have been a good program to be riding around on this bike looking like that. Oh geez, that should pop out of there. Oh boy. I think we're just gonna leave it in there until we get the fork off of the bike and then it'll or get the lower leg off. We'll go ahead and uh, take the other side off. See if she looks the same. Oh yeah, would you look at that, what a disaster. Oh boy, and incidentally, it is rather difficult. Oh geez, that whole thing is just rotten, look at it. That must have had some moisture in there. I'm guessing water got down in here and that's why that turned to uh, schnitt. Uh, so it looks like we'll be uh, getting a new set of these. Uh, you can see where I hit this one with the punch. Uh, basically that spot is facing in, so when you put it back together, if you were going to reuse these, you would put the same spot that you banged on so it's not so noticeable. Uh, this one's pretty far gone. That's not going back on this motorcycle. We will be replacing that part. We'll be just replacing both of them because that looks a terrible. Okay, now like I said, we're going to uh, Take the damper tube screws out of the bottom. We'll go ahead and start with this one. And you are going to be using a six millimeter on this. Once again, Japanese front end. That's gonna go up in the hole and you need kind of a long one. Basically, I made this one. I just took a regular Allen wrench and I cut it off and I put it in a quarter inch. This is a quarter inch. And then I actually tapped it and put a set screw in there because I was using this thing all the time. So you're gonna get it up in there. And what I like to do is I like to give it a tap for two reasons. Number one, I wanna make sure it's all the way in the fastener. And number two, I'm kind of shocking uh, the bolt. And we are going to be using an impact. Uh, I used to use my 3 8 impact on this job, and guess what? Half the time I was finding it wasn't coming out. 
and uh, hopefully these are going to come out okay because if they don't then we're going to show you another uh, trick. Uh, let's just cross our fingers and hope that they do come out uh, because if you when we get them out I'll show you the fasteners. They're not very deep where the tool goes into the fastener. So you can run into a problem here where when you're doing this portion of the job it will strip that. So let's cross our fingers here. Oh, yay. Oh, no. Well, we had one positive thing happen. It came out and one negative thing happened. The tool fell in the oil pan. But that's not the end of the world. I'd rather clean off my tool than have to. Uh, if the other one comes out OK, we're not going to show you the trick. I'll just tell you about it and tell you what you can do to get those out of there if they strip. Once again, I found that air is the best method and bigger is better. And now we're getting ready. Huh, listen to that. We're getting ready to make a mess. We're getting ready to make a big mess because it seems like the fastener is stuck up in there. Usually it will come out and then the fork. Oh, oh, there she goes. Look at that. Oh my goodness gracious. That was almost like it was under pressure. And here comes our fork oil. It's darn near impossible to do this particular portion of the job without making a mess. Just glad it didn't get on me. Seeing how I'm not really dressed appropriately for this kind of mess. So then what you can do is you can pump it to get the fork oil out. All right, and I lied about this too. We have to get this out of there to get the snap ring off in order to pull it off. So, let's see what we can do here. Normally, there's a lip on this and you just slip the screwdriver under the lip and it pops right out. But this one is pretty much disintegrated. Oh, there she goes. Just slide that up out of the way. And then in, inside here, very crusty, you're going to find a clip. Dirty, I can't even see the end of it. All right, I can't really see that clip because it's so scruddy in there, so I'm gonna give it a quick blow. Now well, let's see if we can poke and prod here. Filthy mess. I think I can finally see where I need to pry after getting all that scrud out of the way. Oh, there she comes. There she goes. Oh boy, that thing's all rusted too. There she comes. There she goes. I think we'll be replacing that too. All right, now that we've got the cover, the rubber that keeps moisture out, which really didn't do its job, and the clip, we can go ahead and give this a little slide hammer action. And that will remove the seal and the upper bushings from the lower leg. And the only thing we've got left in here is that. 
And when we go back together, this will get put back on there like a so. And that's all there is to it on that. And the next thing we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and remove the rest of this stuff off of here. I'm just gonna take a screwdriver, put it in where the split is, and that will allow you to pop that bushing off. And then the second one will come off. And you wanna keep track of which way those go. Now you can take your seal off. And when you're going back together, you'll also observe the specific way the seal goes on. But we're not worried about that right now. And then we're going to take off the really bad part. <laughs> okay, there's one side. Well, the positive thing is the tubes look like they're in good shape. There's no corrosion on the tube. They look nice and clean. Shouldn't be a problem to reuse those. Okay, let's go ahead and get the other side taken apart. So we were having a bit of difficulty getting the other one out and I turned my gun up to full blast and we did get it loose. I uh, had to have the assistance of my cameraman uh, hold this while I burned it because it was hard to hold it and do it at the same time. So she is loose. Uh, I'll show you something in a second here, but we did get it loose. And that's a good thing. We don't care about that falling in because we're gonna replace those with new ones. Evacuated our oil. We'll go ahead and get this other chinga out of there. Not even going to try to pry on it. Just going to use the same method I used on the other side. There she goes. Use that to hold that up. And oh boy, here we are, a mess again. Oh, Jiminy Christmas. Wowzer. That's a disaster. Well, I'm sure glad we decided we wanted to powder coat these. All right, same program. Find the place to pry. If these were new or clean, you could see where it was, but it's so dirty in there. Okay, I finally discovered where the end of that darn clip was. And I'll show you when we get it out how there's spots for you to pry on it if it wasn't full of rust. Carefully trying to get it to come out of that groove so I don't end up with part of it still in there. There she comes. Almost. There she goes. And you can see on the clip how there's spaces where it 
the clip goes in and that's the best place to pry on it right there. Obviously you don't want to pry on it there. You want to pry on it there, 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 or there. It's better to do it at the end and kind of, these are, these were springy when they were new. Now we're ready to perform our slide hammer action. Then I'll tell you plan B if your screws strip. Oh, she's a coming. Mother f-